Oh, if you could all turn on your microphones. Yeah, turn on your microphones. Um, before we start, I'd like to remind everyone this meeting will be audio and video recorded, and the recording becomes the official record of Arapahoe County Board of Adjustment Proceedings. If you intend to speak during the public portion of any case, please make sure you're on the sign-up sheets and you will be recognized at the appropriate time. That being said, it's important we follow meeting procedures and maintain decorum. Please refrain from speaking out of turn or from having side conversations while the meeting's in, prog in process, progress. I would like to call the order of the Rappel County meeting for Board of Adjustment for April 11th, 2019. My name is Ron Lombardo. I'll be acting chairman for today. Uh, to my left, we have uh, George Robinson, uh, Stephen Stoller, Stoller, Stoller. Uh, to my right, Beth Kinsey, and uh, Ryan Tuberville. County Attorney Bob Hill, Administrator, uh, I don't know if that's your title. Sony Inspector. Sony Inspector Michelle Lance. And recording is Terry Molly. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't... Chair Yucky, Planning Division. So we're all set to get started, I guess. If any of the board is no longer qualified to serve or has received or, or actual conflict of interest, please disclose this information now for the record. Anybody? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, the approval of the minutes, we don't have enough people here that were uh, available for the last minute. So we can't get those approved now. And will they be approved at a later date then? Okay. Um, okay, presentation to cases. Uh, the first case for Board of Commissioners is BOA 2019-0001, Girl Shaw. Um, I would like to call the applicant forward to approach. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I might just interject. Um, this has been posted in accordance with the Land Development Code requirements, and the board does have jurisdiction to proceed with this case. Okay. And we want the... Presenter first before you, is that correct? Um, typically we do a staff report first. Okay, let's do the staff report. I'm sorry. I, I think these are older minutes and it was reversed back then. And when you come up to the microphone, if you would give your name, your location, your position, that would be helpful. Okay. <coughs> Michelle Lance, Rapo County Zoning Inspector. Um, good afternoon. The subject property of 49395 East County Road 30 is zoned A1 Agricultural 1. The minimum lot size is 19 acres. This parcel is a legally created lot and meets the underlying zone district lot with size and with lot width and size requirements. The applicant and owner, B. Well Shaw, is requesting approval of a variance to allow for a home to encroach 48 feet into the 100-foot setback. Currently, the home and deck are 52 feet from the front property line. The applicant is also requesting to allow for an accessory structure in front of the home. The minimum setback for an accessory structure is the front building line of the principal structure. This just means no accessory structure should be in front of the home. The accessory structure does not meet the required side setback of 25 feet. The accessory structure is 8.6 feet from the side property line. The existing home was a legal non-conforming single-wide mobile home. Legal non-conforming means that the current zoning does not allow for a single-wide mobile home, but it was placed on the property prior to the zoning prohibiting single-wide homes. Staff is of the opinion the single-wide home is no longer legal non-conforming per Land Development Chapter 11 non-conformities. 
The nonconforming structures should be rebuilt in conformity with the regulations of the zoning once the legal nonconforming status is lost. The applicant commenced work to remodel the mobile home and add a deck to the structure, but did not first obtain a building permit. The building division issued a stop work order and determined that because of the modifications to the structure, it must now meet all standards of the current adopted IRC. The existing garage that does not meet front or side setbacks was built without the benefit of a building permit prior to the applicant purchasing the property. It is an illegal non-conforming structure. Accordingly, the only way that the applicant can maintain the structures, either as existing or remodeled, in their present locations encroaching into the setbacks is if this board finds the applicant qualifies for a variance and this board grants the variance for the structures encroaching into the setback. Staff is of the opinion that the existing mobile home has lost its legal non-conforming status and the garage had never had a legal non-conforming status as discussed above. Moreover, the existing locations of both the mobile home, including as expanded with the deck, and the garage encroach into the above stated setbacks for the A1 zone district. As a result, in order to maintain, construct, reconstruct, improve either both or one of the either or both of the home or the garage, the existing in their existing locations, the applicant must qualify under state and county regulation for and receive a variance. The applicant is required to obtain a building permit before she can reconstruct the home or the garage, and the applicant cannot get a building permit unless the structures comply with the zoning in all respects, building setbacks, or this board grants a variance to the setback encroachments. Staff is aware of no exceptional topographic conditions or other extraordinary or exceptional situation or condition of the applicant's property that prevents their compliance with setback requirements. Instead, it appears there is land available on the applicant's parcel in which the home and garage could be built without encroachment into any A1 setback, although this may increase the cost of the applicant's proposed reconstruction. Included in the staff report, you'll find the applicant's explanation of hardship, various construction documents, and an improvement location certificate showing the location of the home, garage, and deck. Also, are photos that I took from the road um, going from right to left. On page 50 of the report, you'll find a full set of referral comments from internal and external agencies and our East End Advisory Board. I'll provide a brief summary now. Our Transportation Department and Engineering Department were not in favor of granting a variance. Future improvements to County Road 30 will require 27 feet to the north and south of the road for additional road lanes. This will mean that after the improvements, the home and deck would be 25 feet from the right-of-way. After the improvements, the garage would be only 21 feet from the right-of-way. Our East End Advisory expressed they thought the request for a variance was reasonable as long as the structures were safe. Tri-County Health Department reviewed that the home is currently set back appropriately from septic system components. The Fire Department expressed they would be performing a review of any building permits that the owner would submit that they should consider making improvements to the existing access, and if there's a locking gate, a knock spot should be installed to allow them access to the property if needed. I'd also like to note that Joe Richards, our building division manager, and Greg Bragdon, our building supervisor, have made themselves available for the hearing should the board have any questions pertaining to the building referral or any code criteria I'm not familiar with. Do you have any questions for staff? Does the board have any questions at this point? Okay, so in a nutshell, we're, what's currently there is encroaching the 48 <coughs> feet, right? Correct. And then in addition to that, they want to add another structure that would encroach another 25 feet, which would be in front of the house? The, um, there is some existing garage uh, detached accessory structure. It should show in that aerial photo um, on the very front page. It's that white square on the right. Okay. So that's existing and was built prior to the applicant purchasing okay. that property. Okay. They want to do. They want to move. So they want to move that, right? No, they want to um, approve. They want a variance for the structures in their current location. Right. And it's no longer grandfathered in because there was no permitting done. 
Right. We, there was no proof that it was ever permitted or existed prior to the zoning restricting um, the location of detached structures. The expanded right away. What's what's the future? How many lanes of road are we looking at? Um, they define it as a major arterial um, in their traffic plan. So I'm not sure. The referral to comments didn't have a specific date when those um, improvements would be made, but an additional 27 feet on each side would most likely be a four. So it would be a four-lane road? Mm -hmm. Yes, currently it's two. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions we have? Michelle? Is the, uh, I'm sorry, is the deck currently finished or was it stopped midstream? Um, it's, it's stopped midstream, so in the photos you can see that um, the base of it. Do you know what the proposed speed limit would be on that road once it goes to four lanes? Um, I do not know what the speed limit, the, if it would increase um, being four lanes or not. Uh, okay, I hate to monopolize here, but uh, any other structures in the vicinity that uh, are as close to the road as this current location? No. Um, below you or below the aerial photo on the front page, um, you will see that there is a Miss um, Shaw's property is in the middle. Those are zoned A1, um, and then to the East is AE, and then to the west is A2. So A2 is a smaller lot size and has, um, you know, they all have different lot sizes and setback requirements. Any other structures um, built that had any improvements before the change in zoning that you're aware of? These are the only two structures that I'm aware of on this property. And any other neighboring properties have a similar situation that you're aware of where they did some improvements? No. Um, the properties in the surrounding vicinity all appear that they're meeting their required setbacks. Is there anything unusual about the land that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Thank you very much. Anything else for Michelle? Thank you. Thanks. And uh, now if we could have the applicant come forward or the representative. And again, please state your name and address and relationship. Certainly. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Brummett, B-R-U-M-M-I-T-T. -T. Registration 49929. I represent the applicant, Burrell Shaw, who appears to my right. I thank you all for taking time. Would you repeat the address of the location, please? Absolutely. The address of the, sub of the subject property is 49395 County Road 30 in Bennett, Colorado. I think the city did a good job summing up the history of this property. My client did buy the subject property uh, with the existing garage. She's seeking now to add a deck. That's what this additional structure is. You can see the photographs. Uh, it, sh it is important to note that this deck would encroach to the roadway. It does technically meet a violation of the zoning requirements. But as Michelle just spoke about, the actual closeness to the road of this deck upon completion is still four feet further away from the nearest right-of-way than the existing garage. Now, the board has discretion to approve this variance, to allow her to construct this property, and doing so would be consistent with the interpretations to Section 13, 1000, specifically 1004. It is important to note that this specific lot is plotted as A1, but her neighbors and the other differently zoned areas, uh, they also and based on their conversations with my client, are not in compliance with the zoning. 
It shows that in this vicinity that being 100 feet back from these roads, meeting the 48-foot requirement, isn't uniformly applied. Talking also about other options, Ms. Burrell explored, uh, she explored those options as Ms. Shaw, right? I know that. Yeah, I know that. Looking at those, she looked at putting a porch off the back of her property but found it would come too close to her sewer line and it would add additional expenses, but it's also not desirable. Moreover, the actual addition, the project itself, isn't being attached to her home, but rather to the concrete foundation upon which this mobile home sits. And so if you look at uh, these things taken in the totality, the fact that she is willing and able to take the steps necessary to get the permits and make sure that, to the extent practicable, the existing structures and the new structures comply with zoning, uh, that any hardships that would be imposed on her as a, through a denial of this zoning variance, they would greatly outweigh really the purpose of the, of the regulations that they're meant to ensure, but it would also limit her enjoyment of her property, specifically enjoying those things that other people in her vicinity, but maybe not necessarily her zoning area, enjoy on a daily basis. If there's any other specific questions, I'm happy to take those. But I would ask the board to look at this matter and understand exactly what my client is faced with, the home that she purchased existing as it is, and she's just trying to make this work the best way she can. Allowing this variance, it will not put anyone at, at any risk of safety. It, there are no imminent plans for CDOT to do this expansion, and even those plans show that there would still be a 25-foot gap between her porch or actually the garage and the nearest right-of-way. So I would ask the board exercise its discretion and, and grant this variance for Ms. Shaw. You mentioned that it's not attached to the uh, mobile white home. That is correct. And how easy would it be for her to move that mobile home? Um, it is on a permanent foundation right now. But it could be moved. She would be able to move the mobile home. No, I cannot move it. You cannot home. move it at all? It's on okay. permanent foundation. There you go. Um, how long ago did you purchase this property? Last year, March. And uh, were there no checks or, or verifications before you moved in that would have shown that the existing structure was, was already out of date? No, I did not know that. The only thing I was aware of was that I have to make sure that it is manufactured home and it is on uh, real property, which I did get it from the seller. And... and Oh. That's our her. He's my engineer. I was going to say, we do have an engineer present um, who can address some of those specific questions. I don't mean to interrupt the board. And, and then do you, uh, when do you plan to move in there, or are you already there? I'm not there right now. Next year, once my daughter graduates from Grandview High School, that's when she's trying to move over there. We're downsizing because my older one is already in the college. Okay. And if I can ask, what pleasures of the property will you not receive if the variance is not granted? I would not be able to enjoy the views and everything. On the, uh, it's on the south side because on the back side of the thing, I, it's a lot of piping and a gas pipe, electric, and everything else is going on. And there are no views in the back. It's on the facing north. Yeah. Um, the board have some further yeah. questions? Of, I, I guess of any of them, even the engineer can speak at, at this just, time. Is just to be clear, is the, the variance you're asking for is the four-foot additional length right. of the so porch, it was, or is it building the porch itself? We would like a variance to be allowed to build the porch itself, but also not to be forced to move uh, the garage. Based on Ms. Lance's testimony, it seems there might be some issues in the future regarding where that present existing structure is. And so if a variance is necessary for the existing garage, the existing home, uh, to remain there, we would be asking for that. But primarily, we are asking for permission to build this uh, porch. So the variance is not to cut your porch off four feet, but to actually even be able to build it. Correct? That is my understanding of um, the permitting process and exactly what we need to get, the approval we need from the board to move forward. And, and a separate issue is the garage. Is the, At this time, are you looking in the future to avoid a problem in the future? Is it a problem that the county is... is pressing on you right now to get rid of your garage. That's what the county is pressing on it now. That's saying that the garage is 
not under compliance either. If I may, the garage apparently is is already in violation. So unless um, unless you can get a variance for it, it would be a zoning violation, and the county could take them to court over requiring them to essentially tear down the garage. Was the garage there when you bought it, or did you build the garage? Oh, it was already there. Yeah. And as far as we can go back to the pictures, they were there for since they had the home. This is the garage we're talking about? Yes. Okay. And the garage was never permitted. It was never asked. It, wasn't, it was built prior to them. It was never permitted by anybody. There's actually two violations there, then the zoning and the building. How much would it require to move the garage at this point? We don't have an estimate for that moving, but um, I would I would open up to our. Uh, would you be able to speak to that at all? Sir, so, if, if you would, we, excuse me, if you would identify yourself, please. My name is Arthur Ashworth. I'm a licensed professional engineer, state of Colorado, and multiple other states. Pardon? You would give your address. Hey, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my uh, work address is one five five seven two South Elk Creek Road. <coughs> Pine 80470. Thank you. If you want to contribute. So, to move the garage, uh, and I apologize, I have not looked at the garage up, above and beyond just generally where it's at and the size of it. Um, essentially, you're talking about detaching a, uh, a structure, and moving it to a new foundation and everything else, probably in the, in the neighborhood of uh, thirty dollars to $50,000. And how much is it going to cost to complete the deck as it is right now? Uh, I am not a licensed contractor, so I can't give you those things. If I had to ballpark it, I have probably around ten to fifteen thousand dollars. And what if you cut the size of the deck to meet the setback requirements? The um, probably double that because uh, a big portion of the deck has already been uh, the casings have been drilled and framing had already been set. And that was done without a permit, correct? That was done in this whole process, this, at the beginning of this process. Well, the, the, excuse me, the existing, the garage was existing when she purchased it, but right. the deck wasn't. Correct. You're right. Even the, even the existing, whatever. There, there was an existing deck on the structure that is now being extended a little bit <laughs> further and wrapping around the side of the house. So the existing deck didn't. Didn't it, does it, the existing that met the setback requirements? No. I, don't, no. I don't. I don't believe so. No. Based on the conditions regarding the garage, um, it seems that the county's position would be that it does not. But we actually don't have information as to when the partial deck was either poured or when it was removed. Uh, I do have apologies. The general notes for what was done once she purchased the home. If I can provide those to the board, just if I could be clear, none of the structures on the property. Meet county approval. That is correct. Even before, uh, even when I purchased. Before you bought it, and the, 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 the home right. itself, right? Yes, nothing. Um, if I can clarify, the original non-conforming mobile single mobile home was, um, you know, there prior to the zoning prohibiting it. It was already encroaching into the required 100 foot setback. However. Since it was legally non-conforming, it was allowed to stay. Once it loses that non-conforming status due to the modifications that have been done, it's required to meet all current zoning. So the single-wide mobile home, the deck, and the garage were all within the setback. In, in addition, Michelle, could you speak a little bit as to your understanding of what modifications have been started on the property, and certainly maybe the applicant can speak to that too. Um, would I be able to refer the modifications to the building department since they've done the inspection? Um, sure. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, my name is Joe Richards. I'm the uh, building division supervisor for Arapahoe County. Um, this property has come to our attention and started out with a building violation. Uh, all the work that's been done out there has been done non-permitted. Uh, the deck, uh, if there's a foundation, did you put the foundation in? No, it was already on the foundation. Okay, that's not a permanent foundation. It's a slab under the trailer. No, it's a permanent foundation. 
it's a full crawl space with the uh, HUD required uh, surrounding case on our crawl space, case on our sorry, not case on, um, footer, uh, stem wall, and then also joke case or concrete case on supporting the actual mobile home. Okay, but it's not permanent. We bought the home that way. Okay, well, that, again, non-permanent foundation. We don't know where that is. The deck is attaching to the mobile home, which is not allowed by MHIP. Um, the uh, uh, deck wraps around. We actually talked it in the front office about how it had to be modified. The mobile home itself has been modified. That is not allowed by MHIP. Once that's done, it has to be brought up to code. Uh, electrical service has been run to the, pro uh, to the building. It's been rewired. The mobile home? Yeah, um, part of the purchase that was done. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's just it's, it's a mess. Uh, we have pictures of the wires. We haven't been allowed into the, the home, but the roof's been modified, the wall's been modified. Again, all without permits. So with all that being done, probably should have taken the mobile home and, and moved it back you know, and constructed it correctly. Okay. So essentially, you could be left with a mobile home that could be moved, destroyed, demolished, whatever, and you'd still have a deck sitting there. Right. That's encroaching. Right. Right. And if you approve the setback, there's no guarantee that I'm going to allow the uh, permit status to move forward, depending on how those drawings, because that mobile home has to be engineered completely from one end to the other, the roofs, the walls, the, uh, the electrical system, uh, all the drywall, all the siding has been put on, all has been done without permits. Uh, there's a specific abatement that has to be done before a remodeling can be done. The violations go on and on and on. When when was the mobile home originally put on that level? I have no history of that. Do you know when it was put it in? It was 1974. Could a new mobile home be put in the same spot? Yeah. Well, that would be up to zoning to allow another thing. I don't know if that's... <laughs> um, just one thing. There's been some comments com coming from, and I don't know that they're making it onto the record. So we're recording this. We'd like to make sure that. Could we have one moment for Arthur Ashworth to put onto the record the status of the foundation of the property? Of course. Wonderful. So, yeah, if you would just reiterate what you explained. Well, I, I need to clarify several things here. Y yes, the original modular that was placed on the property. Um, if it was 1974, it was 1974. I'm not sure. The original construction of the foundation under the modular is, yes, uh, spread footers, stem walls, caissons supporting the, the modular. Part of, I'm sorry? Caissons? Caissons, uh, cast concrete uh, pillars up underneath the support points for the original modular. The modifications that are proposed that are shown in my plans actually make it no longer a modular home. I have, re I have looked at, from a lateral and from a gravity standpoint, the uh, exterior wall, because we are now supporting a new roof over the, the uh, deck, which is going to be attaching through that wall and down to the foundation. There are foundation modifications that are going to be required that are going to make it a permanent structure, and that whole modular cannot be moved after the, the deck has been added to it. So, although I totally understand where they're coming from, that... This is a modular. You can't modify a modular. I totally understand that. We're make, because it's no longer going to be a modular home, it is going to be a permanent structure um, and being attached that way. And if modifications need to be made to the foundation in order to support the remainder of it, we will do so through uh, normal process. That's not an issue. Um, but to clarify what was being said earlier, the, the modular is placed on uh, spread footers was placed on stem walls with a crawl space underneath and attachments that are uh, essentially HUD compliant for modular home construction and attachment. I have a question maybe for you, Bob. Um, so is my understanding correct that even if we approve the variance that the, the building inspectors could unapprove it? Uh, unallow the Yeah, <laughs> so the only thing that your variance would allow is the structure within the setback. For actually, for both structures, the garage and and the um, mobile home, or what will maybe not be a mobile home. If if you grant it, you know, currently that single wide mobile home wouldn't be permitted under our zoning, so it couldn't be 
redone as a another mobile home. As he's saying, he has to it has to be, essentially be rebuilt to uh, uh, entirely non-mobile home structure that meets the um, international residence code, um, which is, I think, what what our building department said, was saying is that's going to be a significant building project to to rebuild that in that manner. As such, what he's saying, even if, if you approve this, it still would have to be rebuilt to the code structure, and, and that's the proof that so the building a significant cost would require. Yes. In, in the setbacks are the same, regardless if it's classified as a mobile home or that's uh, correct. Any, any, it's, it's the same yeah, any setback issues. Any structure is good. <clears throat> Is there a way to separate out the two, or do they have to be approved simultaneously? The garage and the... Yeah. Uh, I think other than that they're asking for, for both, and um, yeah, I don't know that there's really a way to separate them. I mean, you, you certainly could approve it for one but not the other. If you found that, you know, the, the one met the standards for a variance under our code and state, state law, or and the other doesn't, you know, you could make that decision. Okay. So by leaving, I'm sorry. No. So by leaving the garage there and not the deck, it still would not meet. We would still have to give a variance. Yeah, and, and I think you know, it's not just the deck that encroaches. Yes, yeah. in both the entirety of both structures as being proposed to be modified, and as they were um, when she bought the property. Okay, and that we have a, a building issue with just say leaving the garage and not doing anything with the deck i'm sorry i don't understand would we, well would you come in and say okay this you said there were wiring issues and a, a lot of things had to be done so by leaving the existing garage if we were to say yeah let's leave the garage not do anything more in the deck there still could be cost factors and changes required by the applicant. That's correct. Nothing on the property that we know of has ever been permitted. All the work done to the existing structure, uh, whether engineered or not, has not been permitted. So that's our concern is things are going on out there and we're looking at asking for forgiveness rather than permission. We don't like to work backwards into a situation. So we can make sure the, the structure is saved. And just to reiterate, it's the county's position that the structure, the deck, the mobile home structure, and the deck are both encroached into the center. Right. Setback. So nothing is in well as the garage. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we've seen we've seen no plans yet of the uh, modifications. They lost the grandfather when they started doing the modifications. Is there anybody here from Ro Road and Bridge, or do you? Uh, uh, no, the building department. We don't talk to Road and Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to talk to Except last night, it pulled me out of the snow. But. <laughs> we don't have anybody here from Road and Bridge currently or present today. No, that would be engineering services and they are not here. I'd yeah. like to talk to the homeowner again, if possible. Thank you. You have to repeat your name? Um, no. When you purchased the property, did you have a realtor? Yes. Did you sign disclosures through the realtor that pertain to any of these issues? No. And she told me everything is out there as supposed to accept the real property, which I said earlier, and she goes, she will get that done. Because that was the only thing I knew about it, about mobile home. Mobile home. Can I clarify one thing you? Sorry, I was clarifying with her whether nothing was disclosed on disclosures or whether no disclosures were ever given. And it seemed that they were given. But they were given, but they said there was no problem with the home or zoning or anything except that they had to get the affidavit done. But we have company, which they get the bulls of it, and they did provide them that. And I didn't provide that again. Was the survey done? Several were done. ILC was done and uh, that was at the closing and provided. And was this titled with the title company? Yes. And do you mind if I ask, did you take out a loan? Yes. Hmm. He went to the title clearance. 
Have you at any point in time considered taking everything down and starting over with a house of some no. sort? What would be the hardship in that? I'd have to move the whole thing back, basically. Everything back. The existing gas lines, electric, uh, so, septic. Everything. It's basically starting a, buying a probably piece of land and then reconstructing the whole thing. And have you looked at through, I guess this would be for the engineer, using the existing electric and septic and putting the house in a different section of the property that wouldn't encroach on any of these setbacks? I have not. Um, to do so, basically the septic, uh, septic system sits up within a 10 to 15 feet of the north side of the house. Uh, so everything is going to have to jump the entire septic system, including the leach field, um, in order to go there. And then to gravity feed to a septic tank would be extremely difficult. Not to mention the strict cost of just taking down everything that's there currently. Can you give me a ballpark estimate on the cost of that? To use the existing, you know, obviously try to make the best of what's there and the, just shift the house. You something. can't. You can't move. Uh, you cannot reuse the septic system and move the house because the the property slopes from uh, the south side to the north side. So to gravity feed to the septic system, uh, you pretty much would have to build the house uh, with the sewer line on the opposite side of the leach field and have proper drop. Probably uh, this, the sewer line would start somewhere around 8 to 10 feet above grade. And so a whole new septic system would have to be installed. So like maybe $100,000? I'd probably put it north of that. but Okay. All right, just one more question for building, if you don't mind. Yes. Based on all your violations, what would you anticipate the cost if they brought everything up to code to your satisfaction? Uh, depending on the, it's based on the valuation of the uh, revision. So probably a permit, probably two or three thousand dollars somewhere in that neighborhood. Two to three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. For permitting. Just for permitting. Yeah. And then, do you estimate any other from code violations? Do you ever estimate the cost of all that? You mentioned asbestos and electrical. Well, all that has to be done. All that is probably moved at this point. They probably uh, everything's probably been gutted already, but we don't know if there's asbestos. And so when I have to do inspections, when I send the inspectors out there, they have to assume there's asbestos there, and they have to wear masks and stuff to protect themselves to make sure there's no uh, disturbance in the, in the asbestos. And the cost in that, or any? Uh, no, the county absorbs that in their regular inspections. Okay. But according to your own statement here, the structure is currently unsafe to occupy. That is correct. It is unsafe. In 1974, any trailer and mobile homes that old uh, are not allowed to be modified. Once they're modified, they're unsafe to occupy. There are fire traps. And I appreciate the, you know, the modification up to code, but uh, that's, a, you know, that's a stretch at this point. The problem I have is it's proceeded without permits, so we don't know what's going on. If, if if they were to stay there to your satisfaction, do you have any idea of what, what you would see as a reasonable compromise? For, I'm sorry, as far as? Safety of the structure and what, what would satisfy you at this point? Well, at this point, uh, the structural engineers here, we'd have to uh, confer with him. He has to supply his drawings, calculations, and everything that the building is safe and uh, the structure meets. Uh, wind loads, snow loads, etc. Uh, the wiring will have to be examined by a licensed uh, uh, engineer and, and or a licensed installer, electrical uh, trainman, so that the, the electrical system safe, the heating, air conditioning. Uh, now that we're going to go to IRC, there's room sizes to be considered, uh, egress windows, uh, safety glass that uh, in the proper places. So it's, a, you know, it's like building a small house. So all those things would have to be looked at. How about the septic system? As far we don't look at the septic, that would be uh, Tri County Health would look at that. Yeah. Is the septic system the same age as the house though, 74? That I don't know. Okay. If, it's, if it's that old, you're probably looking at a new septic system anyways. No, right? I know, but we did get the inspection done when we purchased the house, and they said it was all up to the yeah. code. And it's good, like the septic. Septic. Okay. Can we speak with the engineer now again? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so you heard from him. It's a lot to put on Gwen's plate. Sure. Uh, one piece I'd like to clarify a few things. <clears throat> Number one, it's a mobile home that's already standing uh, at least two feet above grade. There is a crawl space underneath there. There's no need for uh, egress other than windows. Um, to get to all of these things, uh, an analysis can be done. That's not that big deal. And uh, Wait, say that again? An analysis can be done and brought brought up to code showing everything does meet current code. I've had to do a lateral analysis and a gravity analysis just to, do, just to uh, provide what was requested in the first place in terms of a roof over the stack. Um, in terms of asbestos, that testing was already done and has been completed already. Um, and to, to a lot of this, this, this particular project has been kicked back and forth between uh, zoning and the building department, um, both pointing directions at the other one before they can make a decision. So uh, the drawings that I've already completed, which I believe were completed in August. June, June, July, August last year, were submitted uh, for permit previously, and that, that's part of this whole process and why we're still here. Okay. So at some point, you're going to need to get along with the building department to make this happen. Totally understand, but we, so we the, haven't been able to get past just getting The point of fingers has to has to stop in just a professional agreement as to totally what it agree. would take to make this happen. And it seems like Which is why the I'm client the is, is still in the game here to, to make this happen. And so I guess my question to you is, what are you going to estimate her costs in all of this, including the $3,000 in uh, my permit cost? violations? Yeah, to make, to make this house whole, stable, and safe for her to live in. Again, I am not a licensed contractor. I can't do all. I, I don't estimate that stuff because I've often been wrong when I've estimated. Um, my personal cost for for me to do the engineering to coordinate, I have no issues with coordinating. We've been trying to get in and discuss this right. stuff. So what would what would your cost be? Thousand fifteen hundred bucks, somewhere in that neighborhood. Depends upon how long it takes and everything else that's going on. And that that is to just get what we have currently submitted um, to. Pass whatever is required by building. Okay. And then all the other additional building costs and fees. Correct. Okay. And, and at, at no point in time has Michelle ever uh, been hesitant to uh, do what needed to be done in order to get the permit done. Uh, I've been, she has requested my presence here today. Uh, we were here two and a half, three months ago to try and to address all of these concerns so that we can get permits. Um, and that's when it got kicked over to it's all zoned incorrectly and everything else. Every time she has asked me to do something to get this building. That, that's fine. I understand that. Okay. Um, so one, one, one thing. But, I'm like, the one thing to clarify, the work was started before permits were. I, as, yes. I, in terms of putting the deck down, yes, they cast foundations. Uh, I inspected those. I inspected the framing for the roof, for the deck of, sorry, the floor of the deck, which has now been sitting out all winter long. So probably going to have to be modified, replaced as required because none of that was intended to be exterior. Are there any other questions or clarifications that the board needs? Is this the sound agricultural? Yes. <clears throat> yes, the zoning is N1. <clears throat> Which is agricultural um, and residential uses. So she could use the land for something other than residential. If an A1 property could be used solely for agriculture. Okay. So, um, last question. You probably wouldn't know the answer to this one either, but what would be the cost to demolish all of this? Uh, if everything was just totally demolished and everything had to be completely removed, including septic and all of the foundations? Uh, somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, because there is a lot of concrete below grade and the septic. Would that be more or less than what she paid for the property to begin with? It will be more. Okay. Me too. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Do we have any other questions or anything that needs to be clarified? Well, question for the owner or a representative there. Um, based that the work so far has been done without permit, is, is 
the owner responsible for paying for any of this work? No, candidly, she should be. And I'm not going to waste the board's time trying to explain away why this work was done without a permit. I understand the building department's issues with all of this work that's been done in the past that now they're asking for forgiveness or some accommodation from the board for here today. But it's important to remember that the garage and the, the, the original structure were both placed by the original owner, whoever sold it to my client, and that she purchased as a bona fide purchaser this lot with the existing garage, with the understanding that it was compliant. And so really, as was explained by the county attorney, you, the Board of Adjusters' job here today is to determine whether my client should qualify or be approved for this variance, not whether the property itself can be brought up to permitting code. Uh, it was made very clear that their decision is, the, who, is what is brought up to code and is what is acceptable. This decision, this narrow issue, is whether a variance should be appropriate. And so it's a good lawyer and it's a way of answering your short yes or no question. I do think that she should be responsible specifically for the work that she did to erect the deck without permits. But my client is more than willing and ready to not only, once she get, hopefully gets this variance, to work with the building department to comply with those permits. And the testimony of people on both sides, for the city and for my client, have shown that the cost to allow her this variance and to bring the property up to code is minuscule when weighed against the cost to either have her remove the garage or remove the entire home, demolish the entire property and start again, or to refuse to allow her to construct this deck but allow a garage which is closer to the road than the existing than the deck that's proposed would be. And so I do think there's some responsibility there. As an officer of the court, I stand before the Board of Adjusters today and say that I am committed to working with my clients to make sure she complies with the permitting within the county. But insofar as the Board of Adjusters can grant this variance, I would ask that they do so and allow her to use this property for exactly what she purchased it for without forcing her to incur this massive hardship in terms of the economic expense and also losing the view, uh, which is something as Coloradans we select our property specifically for. So I thank you all for your time. Excuse me. If I could just make a comment, and I hope I'm speaking on behalf of the board, um, in all due respect, we don't have concrete figures on, on either side of the fence here. Certainly. And the way I would approach it is I would hate to approve or disapprove something for the applicant that would cause that person to spend more money and still not get where they wanted to be. So that's a consideration also. And I thank the board very much for that consideration. Um, home ownership is really a huge investment, and so I am very thankful that the Board of Adjusters takes all of this into consideration. Any, anything else? Any other questions, comments, directions? Sir, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I'd just like to clarify that there, there was never any permit applied for or drawing submitted. Okay. No, that's okay. I just want to make sure that that was clear. There's never been any drawing submitted for approval. We've uh, reviewed some deck drawings uh, on this project, but, you know, we are here to help bring this to compliance if that is the applicant's uh, desire Later on, however, all of this work is done without permits. That's our that's our stand this morning. Okay. So just solely on the garage, how? And you probably haven't been inside the garage, but and what kind of issues? I mean, is it, it seem like it's massive of, of issues to bring it up to code for the home? Is the garage or is the garage pretty pretty clean from what you've seen? Or uh, the garage would be a separate issue. We'd probably look to the structural engineer for some guidance in the structural integrity of the building. If electrical power has been brought to the garage, then that would have to be brought up to code and in compliance. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. A question for the attorney. Um, I think you've talked in the past the a conditional variance, such as the garage at this point. Uh, it's a two-lane dirt road. Can there be a conditional where when the road is or if ever expanded, that that variance would disappear? Uh, that would be difficult. It would be hard to enforce. Um, I, I would recommend against that. Even if we could, and we're just off the cuff, I'm thinking 
I'm not sure we could do a conditional variance like that. I would also like to to point out, you know, one, there's been a lot of talk about the building permit and what it would take to get the building into compliance with the inter international residential code requirements for that. But building can't even look at that. Like we can't issue a building permit if it's not in compliance with the zoning. So the variance is, is the first step before building can even, you know, start looking at plans on, on what's proposed. The other part in determining whether a it qualifies for a variance under standard, I think a simple way to look at it is you want to look at the property itself. What is it about the property that makes it um, a hardship to com comply with the zoning requirements, in this case, the setbacks. Um, is, it, is it an odd shape? Is there some topographical issues to it? Is, you know, some, some special circumstance of the property that, that makes it a hardship to comply with the variance? It really doesn't, um, how much it costs to comply with the variance is, or to comply with the zoning. Is, is not really a factor in determining whether there's a hardship. So, that's. Anything else? Anybody? I guess we can bring this to a vote then. Um, do I hear a motion pro or con against the applicant's request? Uh, oh, 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 yeah, good. I'm sorry. Would I do? We need to open public hearing. Oh. I'm not sure we have any members of the public. I'm sorry. Do we have any opening. members of the public? Did anybody sign in to? Okay. Then we'll proceed. Once again, do I hear any motion pro or con on this? Um, I, I, I have a kind of a conditional proposal here and to be considered. Um, You'd mentioned that the deck, because of being out in the winter for a while, is going to need to be redone anyway. Portions of it. Portions. So um, is there a visualized design of that deck that would meet the setback requirement? Okay. So you're saying it's as is or not at all? There's, I don't remember the. Can you step? I, I don't recall the exact dimensions, and I apologize. Um, but the modular is, uh, is doesn't meet the setback. Either. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there is nothing that can be done with the deck uh, that would meet the setback because the it is on the south side of the existing structure, which is already in violation of the setback. Okay. Is that helpful? Um, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna recommend some modification to that. But okay. Once again, nobody seems to be stepping forward. Do we have a motion to um, accept or reject the, the applicant's request? I move to uh, reject the request. I'll second that. The call for a vote, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Robinson? Yes. So if he if he declines, that means he declines their request. If, yes, he's, yeah, he's okay. moves, moves to deny the request. And so no. your vote would be yes if you want to vote to deny the request. Oh, yeah, no right. if you want to. I made the motion. I didn't know I had to vote to. Uh, but, yeah, you made the motion. They need a second. He said, I said, sure, second. Okay. Uh, well, I, I say yay to the to the nine. How's that, Mr. Shawley? I approve. Mr. Lombardo? I deny. Yes to deny. Yes to deny. <laughs> <laughs> if you could clarify this vote, because if you vote in favor of the motion, yeah, I, I'm sorry. That's I apologize. That's what I was trying to do, but apparently it didn't come out right. Um, so, I'm actually not sure what each of you meant. Okay. Could, could we just like clarify? Your I vote yes on the motion. 
And I approve the denial of the motion. Of the, okay. Yes, on the denial. Ms. Kinski? Approve. Mr. Turberfield? Approve the motion to deny. Okay, Ms. It stands. The motion, the request is denied. Is there anything else we have to do to close the meeting? Okay. So, as of 156, the Board of Adjustment meeting of April 11th uh, is closed. Okay.